Hey, hey, what's up, guys? Yo. Daniel. Hey. We missed you. Hello? Hello, can you hear us? Hi, everyone. Hey, we missed you, Daniel. All right, let's give it a minute and then we'll start. All right, um, not many people today, obviously Sunday, it's Sunday morning for, for some people here in, on the Pacific coast. But yeah, like the, the, the big updates, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, perfect. The big updates is probably just our attempt to um, organize the knowledge propagation and I've been pushing this morning to, to kind of centralize that, that knowledge propagation process. And I've created that daily progress document that really needs to be filled out because it, it kind of looks empty right now. And I only started filling out some of the things in here and um, I'll, it's definitely not even a full list of all teams because we have lots of teams. Well, let me share that real quick. Can you see my screen? Okay, perfect. So uh, basically this document, I see it as a living document that we'll be adding stuff to kind of like uh, adding the daily updates at the top. And obviously there won't be much like big updates happening every day, but since we haven't had, uh, you know, emails or, you know, I haven't been sending lots of stuff to people in the past 10 or 14 days, I thought it will be useful uh, for, for us to include lots of things that happened so far. So kind of explaining the usefulness of, of our work the fact that we're working with uh, researchers, uh, medical professionals to create this coronavirus literature review uh, tool and just giving some samples of the work in progress on that. Uh, because again, like there are a lot of people that felt that, you know, our work is of questionable utility and usefulness. I'm included in that cohort. But, you know, day by day, we see that we're creating something not only useful, but very relevant to, to the actual needs of researchers, uh, including even like even the last mile uh, researchers and people that are working in clinics and other medical institutions. So a, a quick bit on that. Uh, then a couple of big wins or not a couple, a list of those. We finally redeemed 4,000 in AWS cloud credits. We're already spending 1,000 per month on Google. So uh, we will probably be good until like July, but, and that's when the AWS credits also end, but we'll definitely need to plan for, for something beyond. Uh, my brother uh, won a $1,000 prize from Kaggle for his hosp hospital beds data set 
and he'll be donating it to cover some of our uh, costs for Zapier, Zoom accounts, and other tools. Um, we've automated pre-processing of Quark uh, 19 infrastructure, and I've included a link to this whole very impressive infrastructure document. And basically it includes all kinds of services that we have, data repository, Elasticsearch, MongoDB, Hypothesis Tool, Kibana, uh, Bell, Andra, Geoparser from um, NASA, um, basically a bunch of tools. The articles that we've produced so far in terms of explanation of what, what we're doing. And yeah, very impressive uh, document so far. So we've also deployed this tool that will help us manage large scale medical annotations. You can try it yourself. Uh, also a vanity metric with hit thousand members, pretty cool. Uh, we've had a presentation from a group of people solving issue of personal data uh, ownership privacy. I don't think we've uploaded the video yet, but I'll, I'll do that later today. Um, we also started working with cities, municipalities, as well as organizations such as National Institute of Health and exploring the, <clears throat> the ways to work with them for now. We will also started uh, working on aggregating and normalizing data in one central place, our dataverse. And a good example is this new data set from Ukraine that thanks to Slava and Kira for making this happen. But basically this is the, um, the, the central place to pull all of the data um, that, that comes from Ukrainian uh, research institutions and government. And that's it. So the next piece on the, this document is basically a team updates uh, table and it has five columns. I, I don't think we need more, but if anyone thinks that we need more, uh, please let us know. The first one is just a team. So this represents Slack channel for the ease of navigation. So uh, if you don't have a Slack channel and Trello board, but you want to be in this sheet, then you most probably need Slack channel and Trello board. So kind of a simple heuristic. Um, again, if you have some internal uh, private channel that you're discussing some issue yet to be formalized, then most probably it doesn't have to be in this sheet. Um, then the next column is what, why, and how. And this is uh, basically a very simple framework to describe what team does. So solving X because of Y using Z. So solving this external communication needs since we're already working with a magnitude of different people, organizations um, using Z. Solving internal human resources needs because we have thousand members, solving this using the list of skills people and matching those to team needs. Again, this is just a prototype of how we can describe what team teams do, I think it's, uh, it's going to be helpful for people that are even understanding where they should jump in and apply their own skill sets. Then we have le leaders who is responsible for this team and committed to it the most. Um, the coordinators who is managing external communications that come out of this team to other teams or external world. And then progress, basically what happened, what is planned, and what are the needs. And essentially, this is the, the internal table. The, the only piece that we have yet to formalize is external teams, because we already have a couple of uh, kind of projects that are not really Corona Y projects, like Health Lens, this open source browser for X-ray images using AI. Uh, but we have a shared channel with them, and we're uh, we're helping them with uh, resources and all kinds of things to uh, basically move move forward. Whew. So that's it. Um, and we can jump into our um, agenda. I just want to, to give this kind of quick glimpse into the progress with formalizing this knowledge propagation structure. But um, let's, let's proceed with, with the team reporting. So I'll, I'll quickly remind the, the structure, basically high level progress, uh, time to results and blockers, what you need help with. And let's start with, um, with communications, which is Daniel and Tyler. Do we have them on the call? I don't think so. 
Mm -hmm. Let's jump into, or actually we have Ogily. We should add Ogily to, to the people on this list. Ogily, are you here? Can you hear us? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Um, I've, I've actually been a bit MIA the past, um, the past week or so, so I'm not, um, I don't have all of the updates, but I know that we are currently uh, making progress and working on getting a knowledge management system. So we um, had a chat with Guru, but I think there's also talks of like comparing with a different, a different system that may be more suitable for us in terms of um, like financial um, like ability as well. Um, and then I've been in touch with a couple different organizations that are um, might be good resources for us to collaborate on. Um, we just need to like figure out exactly where we can work with them. Um, and then in terms of uh, human resources, I'm not too sure um, all that's happening there, but I know Tyler and um, Ansan have been um, working around uh, like trying Uh, like internal communications and and whatnot um and uh yeah the um what arthur you have going here is definitely um definitely helpful especially since now we are working on um having uh, not necessarily different but like a daily call for like pacific um coast people and then another one that works best for like people in a different time zone this uh, would definitely be helpful for um, to kind of have a synchronized um, uh, platform for information so like each call is um, like covering the same information for like different people um, that makes sense and uh, I'm trying to think what else what else is going on. Um, yeah, that's that's about as far as I am knowledgeable at this point because I've been a bit MIA the past week. So perfect. That that yeah. sounds perfect. Um, okay, so let's jump into the next team, which is uh, team risk factors. Do we have Maya here on the call? I don't think so. All right, we'll ping her a little bit later. Um, I can uh, I can give oh, a small yes, brief sir. if you okay. want. Perfect. So, <clears throat> as you as you know, we are working on uh, we ha we still have a manual uh, the manual annotation part of our pipeline. So when searching for papers, uh, we need to send them to annotators, but uh, we are trying to do some. Uh, uh, context uh, context analysis so that we can uh, send papers for annotations that have high probability of being found uh, relevant that's the main uh, that's the main task at the moment okay i don't think we have a specific uh, blocker for that i would say it's it's moving slowly but steadily Maybe within the next uh, couple of days, we will have something to present. Uh, at some point, we may, because we are extracting uh, the context as a separate data set, we may, send, we may ask for help for another team, maybe some more heavy NLP task on modeling that, if, if it is required. Uh, we will know tomorrow or the day after. Okay. For the moment, this is the main task. Perfect. Sounds great. All right. Team VT. Uh, Dan Sosa. Hey, guys. Uh, just a couple quick updates. So the vaccine immunology subteam is working on, you know, getting a presentation ready for talking with an HIV virologist, Betty Korber, tomorrow, just to see how we can plug in with some of the tools that she's working on now for COVID-19. Um, Malavika's team is leading uh, contradictory claims in literature uh, work and so they've done some cool stuff already on extracting like the core claims from a research paper and then detecting contradictions so 
either like uh, things like entailment or doing a little bit of like sentiment analysis. So that's uh, that they got a lot of cool directions going on in that team. And then Ali is working on, he's already made progress on extracting Twitter uh, sentiment from drug related tweets. So we're just thinking about the next steps with that kind of analysis. And then Fatma on Jeremy's team has already done some extraction of relations using Indra and has a, like a proof of concept notebook on that. So that's been awesome too. Uh, that's right. what I have so far. Um, and how big are, are these teams? Do you think it, it's worth including them as separate rows? Do you think they'll, they'll be able to participate in, in this kind of uh, filling out flow? Or do you think you should be the, the, the main coordinator for those? Um, each project team is like between three and five people right now. Okay. Um, I can fill it out for now for everybody and then we'll see if that's yeah. like unsustainable or something, then we can change it up. Sounds great. All right. Uh, team discovery engine. Um, I'm uh, a leader here. I don't think we have coordinator yet. Uh, main progress is just uh, figuring out high level architecture for this you know whole grand vision of of uh, the discovery engine this is yet to be formalized i have to fill this in okay team search engine lukash do we have him on the call or someone from from that team i don't think so right Okay. Uh, team ontology engine types of papers. I think it's led by Imran, right? And Christine. Then uh, do you, can you confirm? Um, oh, Christine. Uh, me. Hi. Yeah. Good. I can, I can give you a little update on the, the progress on that. Um, so we kind of have had a consensus out of uh, categories that we're using um, and then we're trying to sort of merge the two data sets that we have. One is uh, from the annotator, Amen's annotators, and one is from Keiko. Um, and I think they have uh, Wendy, Mindy, um, et al. have started working on uh, the classifier and they have some preliminary results already. So basically they're just waiting for our, uh, the final data sets to run the final results. Nice. Any blockers, anything you need help with? Um, so yeah, Dan and I are working on kind of doing the quality check on the, on the annotations. And so we don't really have blockers, we just, um, working on that sounds great um, yeah so but by, by the way i'm a little confused so uh so are we not including team geo team ties that's a good question uh, we should so i'll i'll recommend you jumping onto onto this sheet and adding it and filling out all right okay it, it's just impossible for me to know, uh, you know, all of these teams and, and fill them out. So it's like we have to take this crowdsourced effort to, to, uh, to let team leaders and other people to fill this in. Yeah, I can, I can have an update on team ties as well. Um, great. So we, are, we have uh, started building tools to extract different time periods, including incubation period. So I think that eventually can help reconstruct the whole, the whole clinical course because we'll be able to extract not just incubation period, but uh, the time from onset to hospital admission, from uh, time to discovery, even death. So that would be like a, a kind of potential <coughs> for that tool. And we're also working on extracting demographics data from the 
including sample size and uh, different proportions of um, the subpopulations. Uh, Dimitro is working on building a knowledge graph for ties. Uh, he had some preliminary results, but he's still collecting uh, specific research questions uh, to enrich the graph. And then finally, Nithin is working with Ali from Team VT on the Twitter data sets. Working with VT on what? The Twitter data set. Oh. Yeah. Nice. To enrich the knowledge graph. Oh, uh, no, they, they are working on a separate. So basically, I think they're trying to find papers. Uh, I mean, tweet, tweets around paper, like the sentiment around some papers. And then they also maybe will extract, uh, analyze, for example, uh, the symptom mentions over time or, you know, uh, reactions to different social distancing policies over time. Mm -hmm. but, uh, they're just, they're just getting the data set from right now. So. And uh, I'm sorry, how does it translate into incubation? Uh... Right. So that's, Basically, I think the most direct relevant piece is that they're also getting the sentiment on the papers. So that would be, you know, if we're looking at the papers in in ties, and then they would look at whether there's any social media mention about the papers. Oh, okay. So this is more like a metadata exactly like horizontal team. Okay. So I would actually separate that, and I would create a. Do you guys have a channel for that? No. Um, so I think I. Uh, Dan, can you uh, chime in? Like, I don't know how you guys are going to use the Twitter data. Um, Ollie's tweet team has a project uh, channel. Yeah. Okay. So okay. We'll, yeah, we'll let Ollie. Open this. Okay. All right. So uh, the next team I have here is uh, Team Datasets, and it's led by Slava. Do you, do we have Anton on the call? Mm, yeah, we have Anton. Yes, I'm here. All right. What's up? What's happening? Hey, so, so far again, we, since you already announced that we have the published infrastructure and that it, like uh, that infrastructure already getting piped into Dataverse, etc. And we already have quite a bit of activity on Dataverse. So for example, we already have like 14 data sets and just a couple of days ago, it was like 10 or something. So we, we're growing rapidly. And not only we're uploading data there, we already have 164 downloads. Obviously, we're right now testing a lot, so a lot of sample to get in, you know, propagated back and forth. But nevertheless, triple digits already. So I think it's, uh, it's a huge win. And it's only the beginning, because again, we haven't utilized Dataverse that much yet. Nice. So overall, everything is like huge progress. Nice. All right. And I think that's it, unless anyone else has any. Oh, yeah. I, I again, I forgot. Um, the team Geo. Anyone? Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, we haven't been super present in these calls recently. I'm sorry about that, but uh, um, both me and Manuel are pretty busy between work and everything, and uh, it was also a bit unwell recently. Um, but now everything's fine. So um, what we're trying to do is uh, not... Uh, Nothing super fancy, but we're just trying to get the data sets that we have up to the standards that we set for our team and trying to still trying to automate the 
the upload, just setting up the process and everything. But uh, um, we finally have a fast enough uh, version of the code to get uh, the meteorological data because for the first submission, it took me like maybe 30 hours of uh, an interrupted running of the scripts um, to get the data. Now uh, I have it going in like 10 minutes. So that's uh, that's decent progress means um, we can have uh, an overnight run and have every day um, up to date data sets. Nice. Um, and it, yes. it, so we, we have to coordinate to get them in all the correct places, Dataverse, uh, Kaggle, whatever. I mean, um, that's just setting up the, the automated upload. Okay. So. Do you have any blockers on like how to connect to Dataverse that Anton can can help with? Uh, not right now. I, I'm waiting for Manuel to do some stuff on okay. on that side, and uh, uh, then if we're stuck, we'll contact Slava, for example, and see what uh, what happens. And if we still have problems, then um, we'll just communicate it to to you or just in the call, or we'll see. Okay, sounds great. Good, thanks. All right. I think we're good. Um, we still have some time for Q&A. Um, um, hi, I just wanted oh. to chime in. Uh, Isaac here, I'm from the kind of forecasting team. And so um, on that front, I guess we're working on creating models, as I said, to forecast coronavirus spread. So we've been working with Task Geo on that. Um, so right now we're, we're trying to create simple baseline models, but simultaneously we're having integration efforts to integrate other data sources like UV data, um, weather data, and others into the, our forecast models. And also we're collecting data from other pandemics, so we could leverage that for transfer learning on our models. Um, and we're also, we are also collaborating with uh, several epidemiologists, uh, Serhei for one, on kind of uh, the what we should look at and how we should validate our models. So it's just kind of a quick update from us. This is amazing. So do you guys have a channel? Yeah, so uh, we originally started out looking at patient forecasting. So we're just in the ch a private channel called patient forecasting. I think you're actually part of it. Um, we do also have a Trello board um, so, so yeah, I'm, I can add anyone who wants to join to that channel as well. We're just keeping it private so that everyone in the channel we know has some relation to our tasks. Patient forecast. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll try to find that. Okay, uh, patient forecasting, you're uh, leading the team. Do you have any coordinators? Um, so yeah, I mean, I'd say Wendy Mack has been w working with us kind of um, to coordinate well. We're also, we're, we all, we are also are actually collaborating with Team Geo a bit. I did talk with Manuel since nice. they're collecting a lot of the same types of data. So we kind of ingest some of their data. That's kind of gold. They'll collect it and then we'll ingest it into the model. So um, nice. that's kind of an overview, I guess. I mean, great job, man. Like this, this is an amazing task. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely under, um, under promoted in our community. So we'll, we'll uh, do a better job to uh, give you some spotlight and uh, make sure we're, we're, we're getting more uh, tools and uh, resources your way. Do you have any blockers or needs? Um, no blockers at the moment. We are kind of iterating kind of fast right now because we're trying to submit a preliminary abstract to a global health workshop that calls for abstracts on pandemic forecasting. So that's due Wednesday. So um, I've just been running all of our models and uh, using kind of our team resources to do it. So anyone with any additional bandwidth <coughs> with that would be um, appreciated. Okay. And uh, what type of skill set? Um, so yeah, just good with uh, deep learning frameworks in general. We're using kind of uh, Py t PyTorch models as our core code base. So right now I just need people who are good at working with that to quickly train different versions um, of the model. 
Okay. But we do have um, myself and two others working on it, so we are making progress. It's just okay. So probably like need one, two. Yep. All right. Sounds great. All right. Anyone else? We still have some Q and A time, and if anyone has any questions or suggestions to this document too, or any feedback, um, this is time to speak up. Um, yeah, could you could you share the screen on the document again, please? Yep. Um, so my my understanding is that everyone has access to this, and as um, as we're working on different things, we can just. So there, does that make sense? Or during the calls? I think you, you cut off for, for the second part of your sentence. I didn't hear that. Um, so my understanding is that this will be um, accessible by everyone. Yep. And um, so every day or so as we're working on different things, we can just um, update this. And then it, this will be um, available during the calls. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, calls basically serve as, you know, uh, a synchron uh, synchronous communication, but anyone can jump in in a s asynchronous way and fill in uh, the important things. Uh, like for, and basically we'll, we'll start um, a new thing every day and just like it, it will shift um, yeah. the content. Okay. And it will probably have a, a recording to a daily call somewhere here at the bottom. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, then we're, we're good to wrap it up. Thanks everyone for uh, spending some uh, precious Sunday time with us. And um, yeah, have a good weekend. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Right. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Have a nice weekend.